So recently, iDubbbz went on the Cold Ones podcast to reconnect with his old friends, Max Mofo and Anything for Views. But turns out people did not like it at all. If you look at the comment section on this video, everybody is basically just dunking on iDubbbz. It's so sweet of you two to invite your lesbian aunt on the show. She didn't contribute much, but she seemed to enjoy watching you two have fun nonetheless. Bro looks like he's actually banned from having fun. Does iDubbbz even know that he's there? You guys are lucky he could fit you in between his wife's tattoo appointments. This is a reference to Idub's missing Max Mofo's wedding because allegedly Anissa had some tattoo appointments. Okay, so this all ties into the drama we've been covering in the past week. I made two videos on it. Basically, Anissa Jomha, Idub's wife, started beefing with the commentary community saying that we've all never worked a real job, you know, says the OnlyFans girl, by the way, calling us all uh, losers, saying that we're going broke, saying we need her to stay relevant. She even pretended it's all part of her 1000 IQ plan to trick everyone, but uh, she just ended up embarrassing herself. But anyways, they have both responded on their extremely hit podcast, She Ruined My Career. Uh, this is apparently episode 35, and it's actually just sad to witness the amount of copium from this couple. Specifically the comments about that. Yeah. We should emphasize the negative reaction <laughs> to me <laughs> the in over, that video. The overwhelmingly negative reaction to seeing Ian's yes. mullet. Uh, <laughs> and then next, we're going to talk about... The overly negative reaction... To Anissa yeah. raging. Yeah. Okay, so as he said, there's two segments to this, starting with the iDubbbz comment section and people not liking him. Basically, everyone is just disappointed at iDubbbz's transformation. He is less funny, less energetic, puts lesser effort into his content. Everything is just worse, objectively. Uh, even stats-wise, he's falling off a cliff. As a human, his character is degrading, and, you know, people are just sad because they really liked him and, you know, they subscribed to his videos. And here is them basically trying to explain why people are mad, and obviously they get it completely wrong. You really want to um, stay true to, like, your beliefs and who you are, and, and you've always been that way. And I think that, like, comments were coming in and saying these things, and you felt like you don't know what's right for my channel. You mm -hmm. don't know what's right for me. And that's just you, right. period. Like, yeah. if I tell you to do something, you're going to be like, you don't know what's mm -hmm. good for me. I'm going to do the opposite thing. Is that a grown adult? So you're basically saying that he's like a child and responding like an immature brat. So it, let me get this straight. If your audience is giving you feedback, Here's what you should actually do. You should listen to it, take it into account, you know, go through all of your filters and, you know, assess, is it bad advice or good advice? And if it's bad advice, sure, you can ignore it. Oftentimes, you know, uh, viewers do get things wrong because they don't have the full picture. But in this case, it wasn't like a small one percentage of your audience telling you to do something. This was an overwhelming majority of people consistently telling you that you've been changing for the worse and they can see it on camera. And they were saying that this is going to ruin your career, and it seems like they were right. So responding like, you know, I'm going to do the opposite of whatever you think is just like a, a teenager having a, a temper tantrum, except you're actually full-grown adults. Anyways, this next part, they talk about iDubbbz basically saying that all his old viewers are, you know, incel basement dwellers and racist, and they just wanted people to say the N-word, and now that I stopped saying it, they're mad. When in reality, the 7 million subscribers you had were actually just fun people who liked funny content, people who liked high effort content and stuff like that. It seemed like there were a lot of people who are still to this day feeling bad that you gave them in some sort of indication or idea that they should uh, feel bad for enjoying their the content that you are disavowing, even though their intention when watching it and enjoying it, they feel wasn't bad. They were just enjoying a funny YouTube video. And I think that maybe they felt that you were making them feel bad for it. No, mm -hmm. I think to be honest, it's just like in, in my mind, it's just like a like really bad communication on my part uh, because I started like um, doing things that I would say are like uh out of character for me like me just going on the anthony padilla podcast there was a line in there that sounded like really harsh and it was like um 
yeah, when the basement dwelling person like comes out and sees their favorite YouTuber, or they say a slur or something. Because you were specifically talking about the the fans that had come up to you and said a slur to you in public. Yeah. That's who you're specifically yeah. talking about. So when you say I'm I was attracting basement dwellers, mm -hmm. it makes a blanket statement, statement. that everyone who mm -hmm. watches your stuff is a blanket or is a is a basement dweller rather than you are attracting a lot of people, mm -hmm. but with some of the stuff that you were doing, especially right. because there was satire and there uh, and other things, you were also beaconing out mm -hmm. to the basement dweller who comes out of their room once every month. Okay, I, I just hate this argument because there's always going to be bad people watching you. I'm sure Mr. Beast has 100 million people watching him. There's like 50 murderers watching him, serial rapists or whatever the heck, horrible, horrible people that are watching him, some like bombers in there or whatever. And it's not Mr. Beast's fault that they are in the audience, okay? That's just the consequences of having a large audience. So saying that iDubbbz was signaling to these people or whatever, sure, you know, you can you can make an argument because, you know, he was saying all these things, uh, this could lead to that audience or whatever, but everyone gets it anyways. I'm sure one of you watching is a horrible person, all right? If there's 100,000 or a million or whatever, whoever amount of people are watching, there's somebody bad in there, okay? So there was always a minority. There was always a small portion of the the audience majority of people knew exactly what uh he was doing he was just giving the bullies a taste of their own medicine with his like content comps and stuff now i gotta give them props for at least acknowledging that idubs worded it in a manner where he just wanted nothing to do with his old audience and that's why people were mad at him but I do think there's a little bit of um, backtracking going on here. This is just my opinion, but I think Idubs does actually think his old audience sucks. And he's only saying this now because of all the backlash, because he kind of made like three or four videos kind of doubling down over and over and over again, and basically making it very clear that, hey guys, I have changed for the better. You guys are still, you know, little, little monsters, little goblins who like all of that previous uh, harmful, hateful content. None of us like viewers actually thought that was bad content. I was an avid viewer of the content cops. I thought it was hilarious. I watched it multiple times because it was high effort content. It was funny. It was, you know, you, you scripted out some skits. It was like, no, it was like nothing we've ever seen before. What you basically did over the course of a couple months was essentially imply that all 7 million of your subscribers are bad people for liking your content, that they're racist. And, you know, you changed your content, but, uh, you know, your viewers didn't change. Like, look, I I had character growth. I'm better than you. Now you are still like in your edgy teenage phase, but I am now a grown adult here, you know? And there was a portion of people who always made that argument of, uh, you know, people only liked him for the slurs, which is the most ridiculous things ever. I remember watching those videos and I was like, why is this guy, you know, saying this bullshit? Like, I don't want to hear it anyways, right? That was like the least significant part of his videos, all right? That was just a weird add-on that nobody really wanted anyways. It was the rest of the stuff that was amazing his, his jokes his delivery you know the skits the impeccable research and you know going after people who were essentially you know immortal or like um untouchables right like leafy was so huge keemstar was so absolutely massive all these people were like you know there was nobody who could you know uh dunk on them without getting insane backlash from their cult like audiences right and that's why people liked him. He was a man of the people. And now all of that is gone. You basically just told everyone you hated the previous version of yourself, which everyone loved. All right. And that's an insult to everybody. So obviously people don't like you anymore. Sorry for that, like long rant or whatever. Anyways, that's the end of the iDubs part. Now they move on to Anissa's rant. And uh, here iDubs comes back uh, white knighting for her, basically. And it's so funny because Idubs constantly has to pretend that he loves that his wife is getting shit on on the internet. Like, he has to pretend he likes that. Or maybe he does. He is a icox, so. All right, let's talk about Anissa and her wild antics on stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You screech. You do a lot of screeching yeah. at commentary YouTubers. You speak a lot of Japanese. You speak, uh, you're fluent in Japanese. To... Uh to be honest, like, they kind of deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, 12-year-old boy energy thrown at them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, you're saying you're 12-year-old boy energy. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to do it to them. Okay, so if you missed the previous two videos, uh, during her insane borderline mental breakdown rant, she put up her middle finger to the camera, 
um, as a way of, I don't know, venting her anger or whatever. And that's the reference she's doing. And uh, yeah, I, I guess we're being call called 12-year-old boys here. I don't really need to respond to that. I mean, at least we're having fun here and we're not the ones uh, flipping off the camera or having mental breakdowns. Anyways, she continues her bit of pretending that uh, it's all a part of her high IQ plan. Uh, she pretends like, oh, I had this all sketched out, you know? If you don't know me, you wouldn't have any way of knowing that I do right. that as like a joke. Because I, <laughs> I love throwing the middle finger to our dogs, to you, to Dane. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like a, a guaranteed punchline. Yeah. Especially when I have no makeup on, because it really is like 12-year-old boy <laughs> energy. Yeah. <laughs> so what what was the punchline again? I, I really just don't understand their inside joke, guys. It's definitely not just her getting genuinely mad there. How could, how could I not predict that this is just her? She just middle fingers everyone, you know, her her dog, her husband, her grandma. It's part of the joke, you know. You know, when when her dog sees the middle finger, uh, she starts laughing, right? Because she knows she's very, very loved when, you know, middle finger, of course. Please, please never have children, Anissa. I'm begging you. So when I was a popular streamer and I... Up, 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 hold up. Kowalski analysis. Okay, first off, she, she does say was, all right? when I was a popular streamer, implying that clearly irrelevant right now. At least we can agree on that. Which also destroys your earlier point in that video where you said we need you to get views. So yeah. Now as for the was, I don't know about you guys, okay? I just, I don't remember her ever being a popular streamer. When did we ever see any headlines of Anissa Jomha? Like, when was this? Did I, did I sleep the last five years? I mean, I've been on the internet the last five to six years pretty consistently, right? Like I was there before that, but you know, I've been making content actively looking for this sort of streamer type content and I've never seen her name once. Okay, maybe she was a popular streamer or whatever. I just didn't watch. Uh, I remember she described herself as self described as a titty streamer. So clearly whoever was watching was the highest standard of viewers, right? Definitely not a bunch of gooners. So when I was a popular streamer and I, I'm, I guarantee you, all popular streamers do this. You have to like tap into your lizard brain a bit. And when you have a thought or a feeling, no matter how like dumb, like the second th thought that happens, you have to ignore it no matter what it is. Like, is it good? Is it bad? Doesn't really matter. You have to go with the first like lizard brain thought and then you got to like amp it up. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I want to go on a rant. I just got off a run. I was sweaty as shit. My hair was like, I had no makeup on. My hair was like parted in the most like diabolical, like. Yeah, like, it looked, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so disgusting. And, and I knew, I was like, I'm, I feel like giving a, like a little rant. And I knew that if anyone was going to like clip and share it, it would be the like, the no offense uh, commentary community the, but the bottom of the barrel commentary community, mm -hmm. the ones that like won't even show their face right, and right. shit. Okay, come on. Why does she keep saying this as an insult? All right. Some people just don't want to show their face and they enjoy their privacy. Okay. Not, not everyone is as open as you showing your entire body online on your OnlyFans. Okay. Some of us, all right. We, we just don't want to do that. Okay. And also for someone who's part of the quote unquote, don't shame others community except everyone, then why are you shaming faceless creators, huh? Because especially when, didn't you have a crush on one? You routinely watched uh, Leafy is here and you even flirted with him online until um, you met iDubs or whatever. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she got a secret crush on every, every faceless creator here. The next day comes around <laughs> and uh, I'm, you know, doing my thing, scrolling on TikTok as I do. Yeah. And I'm greeted with Anissa's fucking mug. <laughs> makeupless uh, mug. <laughs> makeupless mug. And yeah. um, uh, on TikTok, and it has like the caption, Idub's wife or girlfriend, whatever it said, rages against the... Triggered. 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 Yeah, right. They did use the word triggered uh, against the commentary community. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was just like the perfect, most like punchy combination of like all the things you said, it was like the perfect synopsis. And I was yeah. like, man, I actually love that they didn't give more context yeah. to this clip or like more of a buildup because it really made you look, in my opinion, like very confident and very 
fucking with it and real. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Idubs just loves watching his wife get railed. It's just a good pastime for him, it seems. I don't know why you would ever enjoy your wife getting destroyed on the internet, dude. It is embarrassing. Really, really living up to the Icox name here. She's so real with it, guys. She's so with it and real. Did this guy age about 50 years in the span of five minutes? Because what what just happened to this guy? Why does he talk like this? It's so radical. It's, she's so with it and real. So I fucking, I scurried upstairs. Yeah. Uh, I had like read some of the comments and I was like, <laughs> This shit's awesome because I wasn't watching it. Uh, uh, I, I just was surprised by it. Mm -hmm. And once I saw the full thing, I was like, that's good. Yeah. That's well, really that's it, good. Because I heard like I was up in the kitchen cooking and uh -huh. I just hear like thump, 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 thump. <laughs> and then Ian like comes around the corner. And he's like, I just saw the video. Mm -hmm. I just saw the rant and it was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, my God. He he actually gets hyped over this. He actually enjoys his wife getting destroyed on the internet. It is, this is actually a thing. Oh my God. I wonder what Idubs' wife's boyfriend thinks about this. I think we should get his opinion on this matter as well. And before I would have to like really like, you know, I was doing like titty streaming when titty streaming was like the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's how you kind of got people mad enough that they would believe anything, right? right. Casey Tron was really mm -hmm. good at that. Are you... uh? bragging about being a titty streamer or, or saying that like it's i don't know you you did something that was devilish so you should be given props for this or whatever and you're using casey tron as an example i don't know if you look up to her or something but that woman is one of the dumbest people on the entire internet i'd argue even dumber than you which is uh hard to do well i think for me what was so different about this time like you raging mm -hmm. uh, you rage raging <laughs> uh uh was that it felt like to me people were seeing what I see mm -hmm. and it's not like like it's just not like taken out of context or something. So this is what you see on a regular basis. Is this what it's like being Anissa's hus husband? My God, my God, this is a fate worse than death. I understand if it was a one-time thing, you know, we're all human. We make our mistakes. You know, she got heated. She put the middle finger, you know, I, I get it. You know, sometimes uh, the stream viewers annoy you or whatever. I get it. But here you are confirming that this is normal behavior for her. No wonder you're so whipped, dude. <laughs> Any man would go insane being married to that. They were breaking it down. They were breaking it down. They were breaking down our podcast. Oh, they said good. that your thing was effeminate. And yeah, that you're emasculated. Yeah, uh, definitely. It sounds about right. Anyways, guys, just remember, uh, no matter what hardship you're going through, life can get really bad. But at least you're not Anissa and I dubs here. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, I forgot the featured comment last time, so I'll put it up this time. Anyways, that's it. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.